Hey everybody, how you doing out there? Aaron from Bean Sprout here. I have a really cool baritone uke to show you today. This is for Ian. Um, and Ian picked out most of the wood on this and it turned out really cool. So to begin with, the back and sides are of pistachio. And obviously that's a really unique set. And check out these sides. Just a crazy set. And you know, normally I don't do use a lot of the white colored pistachio, but this one just reminds me of like a ghost or something. And this whole uke in my head, the whole time I've been building it, has been like, that word has never left me. This is the ghost ukulele. And look at this uh, curly Port Orford cedar top. And a uh, two color pistachio bridge, grafted fretboard, grafted head plate. And uh, it's got the uh, bird's foot purpling on the top and back. Ian wanted a uh, old fur neck that had nail holes in it. And that's an example of like, uh, the old fur I get, it comes from lots of different places and sometimes it's got nail holes, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, usually people ask not to have nail holes. <laughs> and then this time he was like, oh yeah, I really would like nail holes. And I went through every piece of fur I had and I found one, And but it ended up that there's where the nail hole is right there in the end of the headstock next to the number so it's kind of a secret um when i made the blank the neck blank was bigger it had a few other little nail holes and then as i milled and carved the neck they just went away so there's the the secret hidden nail hole there so oh yeah it's got curly maple binding all around um, the Porterford cedar top had a couple of these little dark marks right here, na naturally in the top. And uh, I didn't try to hide them, but I wanted to put them in a place where they'd be extra strong. So surrounding the bridge is where I have a, a bridge plate and extra bracing. So to me, that's the best place to put those because they're going to be safe. Just little natural little pitch pockets or something, but they're fine once they're filled. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the pistachio for the back and sides is rather hard, which is good. Um, and I've taken to thinning it enough so that it doesn't leave the uke heavy, but that this hard back and side wood really reflects the sound well. And obviously the Porterford cedar is always a good top wood. So yeah, it's a winner. Number 536 for Ian. Cheers.